Joining me now is Henry Jackson Society Executive Director, Dr Alan Mendoza. Alan, welcome to the Independent Republic, Mike Graham. Nice Hello, to see you. Mike. Um, the funny thing about all of these stories about seizing assets and, you know, clamping down on, on Russian oligarchs and all of that is it's quite interesting when you follow up some time later to go, <laughs> did anything actually happen? And it turns out nothing's actually happened. Tell us the story. Well, this is quite extraordinary because uh, Mr. Bambush, as part of the sale of Chelsea, uh, basically said that he would give £2 billion of that to... Uh, the Ukrainian um, refugee, oh, sorry, the, the victims, victims of the war. Mm. Now, originally, that was obviously thought, oh, he must mean the victims in Ukraine who were uh, the victims of Russian aggression. Yes. But there's now been a bit of an argy bargy about that because um, he's apparently suggesting, well, it could be Russian victims of the war as well. Yes. And so there's a question about, well, can the money be uh, unfrozen? It needs his consent. Uh, can it be taken without his consent? If he gives his consent, does he have to tell us where it goes? And you could have this remarkable situation where the money earmarked for Ukrainian um, war victims get sent by Mr. Abramovich to Russia. Yes. And where is he at the moment? Because there was a point at which I think he was trying to get into Israel, couldn't do it. Um, nobody really was terribly sure where he went after that. Where is he? I genuinely don't know, but um, there are people who track Roman Abramovich mm -hmm. on a on a regular basis. They look at his planes and they yeah. see where he goes. Has I he mean, still got his big yacht? He's got all sorts of goodies in different places. Yeah. I would imagine that he's using Russia as a base right now, right. Though, given where he is, but but also moving some of his other properties where he uh, doesn't feel that he's in danger. Because was he not at the very start of the Ukraine war, sort of doing some kind of peace envoy type role as well, kind of travelling between... Paris and Moscow, trying to see if there's some some deal could be reached. Yes, again, and this goes back to my point about people tracking him. So yeah. you saw his planes going this way and that way. He was cropping up in negotiations. There was even the suggestion he'd been poisoned at one right. point. He and a Ukrainian had been poisoned at these negotiations, trying to bring some kind of resolution. But all it tells you is that he, he was very close, to, maybe still is, very close to Vladimir Putin, right. which is why he was targeted by the government. Yes, here. and when the club was sold, it was sold to a group of Americans who now have no connection at all. To, to Abramovich or Abramovich, whichever way you wish to say it. Uh, and that money presumably is somewhere, but where is it? Well, it's frozen. So, so frozen where, though? Well, part of it's gone to this foundation. I think it was actually two and a half billion, not two, um, that, that has been sort of set up to essentially distribute this money. And, mm. and of course, it has discovered that it can't distribute the money because there's no legal mechanism to get the money. Right. As to the rest... Who knows? But in general terms, let's just look generally for a second. There is some, you know, 200 to 300 billion uh, euros, pounds that, that's actually frozen of Russian state assets, yes. let alone oligarchs' assets in this way. Mm. And those also are sitting there waiting for someone to decide what to do with them. These are things obviously owned by the Russian state yes. as opposed to individuals. And, and again, we have the same problem there. So who's responsible for kind of watching over it, if you like? Because obviously with the fertile imagination that I've got, I'm thinking there's somebody stealing this money, you know, like something out of Ocean's Eleven, you know, coming up from underneath the vault and if it's gold, just taking it all away. Well, well fortunately, this money uh, tends to be in a sort of digitised form, digitized rather, form. Yes, rather than you know, huge vaults of cash that's, yeah. that's out there. But but look, it's, the banking system has frozen it, essentially. We know, at least theoretically, where, where, where it is. The real question people have started to ask on a regular basis, people like Bill Browder have mm. pioneered this, is yes. can we not unfreeze the Russian state assets and give those assets to Ukraine. Right. Because that is essentially the start of reparations, isn't it, for what Russia's done? In fact, David Cameron suggested this at the Munich Security Conference yes. a couple of weeks ago. And how likely is that to be possible, then? Well, it's certainly possible, because all it requires is governments to pass laws to do it. However, there is, of course, the issue of, well, you're now interfering with property rights, potentially, and even states have yes. rights in this regard. Right. If you tinker with this, do you therefore pull on the thread and everything comes undone? I don't think so. I think on this kind of basis, you can pass discrete laws that can easily target aggressors in this way. Yeah. And you can use that state money, certainly, a bit more difficult in, in the personal uh, status, uh, to actually help the victims of the war. So that's quite a slippery slope, though, isn't it? Because if you actually go all that way to taking and, and basically seizing the assets of a sovereign nation, does it not mean that they could technically seize your assets? If they wished, for example, presumably not in Russia, but there might be British assets somewhere in Ukraine or uh, in, in some part of a country not, not a million miles from Ukraine. Yeah, theoretically. But again, as you've just pointed out, the, the likelihood of much being uh, accessible to these people is, is very uh, limited. Right. So, it, you know, you've got to pick your, your targets carefully. But the, the reality is the Russians have frozen themselves out 
of the global financial market because of what they've yeah. done. And the only question is whether we're going to unfreeze it ourselves and use that money to help Ukraine or whether the money's just going to sit there doing nothing. Right. But they still have access to economic markets via the Middle East, don't they? Because they go through Dubai. I mean, I know that, I mean, I think, uh, who was it that flew back through Dubai? I think it was Tucker Carlson ended up flying from Moscow to Dubai and then took part in a sort of a conference there because apart from anything else, it was one of the few ways he could get back to America because there are no direct flights. But there's still contact between the UAE and Russia. Well, not just the UAE. You've got India is still buying Russian oil. You've got China doing deals with Russia. There's a great swathe of countries yep. uh, who are still trading with Russia and ignoring Western sanctions yeah. and you know not, not fulfilling that part of it. And that's, of course, why the Russian economy has not collapsed, basically, yes. because it's sanctions busting through the back door. And I'm told they've also got some quite good sort of uh, streams of income coming from various different oil fields, gas fields, and even some of the properties that they're kind of occupying in Ukraine. Well, I think that's probably correct. And part of what the Russians have done in Ukraine is steal things. Now, they've stolen people right. because they've kidnapped people. They've also stolen um, goods and they've stolen crops and whatever else they can do in order to help their own economy in that way. Yes. So when will this be resolved, do you think, this, the, the missing money or the, 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 the confiscated money, if you like? When will there be a, a ruling on that? Well, I think on the state side, I think countries are beginning to get their acts together. And I would be surprised if in the next six months we did not see some kind of uniform law being passed, at least in Western right. countries, saying that money is now ours. On the individual level, on Abramovich, for example, that is very unclear because you're into the realm of, well, it's his money, even if it's frozen, even yeah. if he promised it, how do we get it out? How do we do that? And, and that's it, a much more difficult... And if it does part. go to Kiev, who actually gets it? Does it go to Zelensky? Does it go to some well, shadowy group? I mean, yeah. who gets it? Well, it won't go to Zelensky, of course. It'll go to um, the government itself. And the foundation, it, the foundation that's handling that Abramovich money will be responsible for making sure it gets into the right places rather than in yeah. to any diversions that might take it away from the victims, which yes. is what it's supposed to be funding.